Let's solve a problem. this d is same as this d all right now you have to figure out a b c d e and f okay so you have first of all you have to go in this pathway you get d from here and then you from that d is same as this d and then you'll figure out what f should be f is a reagent fine now figure out what a is and what A is to identify that that S plus is not going to do anything anything to the benzene ring that S plus is going to come here. I have shown H plus. That's the way we show it. Actually, it's an acid. It has to be HCl or H2SO4 or any other acid for that matter. We don't show the conjugate base because conjugate base will not be participating in the reaction. That's why. Fine. So what will happen is that H plus will come to this propene to ask for electron. A carbon is going to give its electron and a carbocation is going to be formed like this. And this carbocation is going to go and ask for electron to the benzene ring. And benzene ring is going to give its electron. And after due reaction, you are going to get isopropyl benzene. This is what A will be. We have studied this very reaction of H plus, propene and benzene to give isopropyl benzene when we studied electrophilic aromatic substitution right in the beginning of this of, of, of the chapter hydrocarbon. So, um, so I'm not going through the mechanism because this is something we have already done in the past. So nevertheless, A will be cumene. A will be isopropyl benzene. And what's happening next, next uh, you must be very well knowing because this is the latest reaction we have studied. From A on cumene, if you're adding oxygen, that need not be a pure oxygen. It can be, uh, that is most of the time aerial oxygen. So when we oxidize this, we get cumene hydroperoxide that will be B. So B is cumene hydroperoxide. And when you're carrying out hydrolysis, this is A. When you're carrying out hydrolysis of cumene hydroperoxide, then you'll get phenol and you'll get acetone. Now, which one is phenol? Which one is acetone? We don't know. But you have to figure out. We can't just assign anyone to any one of them because you have been given some information here let's move down here if you add h plus h2o this is basically hydration reaction we studied this reaction when we studied the reactions of alkene so this is something we know from the past chapter this hydration of this alkene will occur and this e will be alcohol and the hydration will be as per markinov addition so e will be 2 propanol This is E. You're adding F on E and you're getting D. Now C, out of C and D, one is phenol and one is acetone. Fine. Now from this, look at this, re this, uh, this E. Now this is 2-propanol. Now which one is, can you, will you be able to produce from 2-propanol? Do you think uh, you're going to get acetone or do you think you're going to get phenol from E? Now, acetone has three carbons. This has three carbons. It's more likely that that E will, on adding something, will be able to prepare acetone out of 2-propanol and not phenol. So you are getting D out of E. 
So your gut feeling must tell you that T is acetone. In this C and D, C is phenol and D is acetone. Fine. Now once D is acetone, this D is acetone and E is this 2-propanol. Now you tell me the reagent that will give you acetone from 2-propanol. Now that reagent we have studied before and that reagent we have studied in the chapter of alcohol. And that reagent is what? This is PCC. PCC converts 1 degree alcohol to aldehyde and 2 degree alcohol to ketone very conveniently without the risk of further oxidation to carboxylic acid. It's an important reagent and we have studied this and there shouldn't be a problem to you to figure out what F is. F is PCC. Or you can go for oxidation with k 4 as well but the, the problem with k 4 is there's always a risk of further oxidation to carboxylic acid. So generally we avoid k 4 unless we are going to that stage of carboxylic acid. PCC is a safer reagent so F we will choose to be PCC. Pyridine chlorochromate. Fine. So this problem is done. Now let's solve a problem of ITJ level or even tougher than that. I have cyclohexene. Now this problem uses the concept that has been taught to you in the last reaction. Now if you only study the reactions and you don't study the mechanisms, you will never ever be able to solve this problem because you know mechanisms are important, very important to study. You know why? Because if you know the mechanism, you can solve any new situation, any problems like this. Now in cumene, we have seen what happens when we add oxygen and H+. Now if we understood that very well, we will be able to solve it out what will happen if we add oxygen to this cyclohexene instead of cumene and then subsequently we hydrolyze it because these two steps we have seen in the preparation of phenol from cumene. So we know what happens actually when you add oxygen and when you subsequently hydrolyze it. So let's apply that concept that we have studied there here. Now before solving this problem, if you're not very sure of the mechanism, I'll suggest you to go back and see that mechanism very well, what's happening there. Come back here and solve this. If you can do it, you are really good. You are, you are really good at organic. And you'll really feel confident once you solve it. So I'll really suggest you work this out on yourself. At least pay some time in figuring it out. Okay, so let's start the discussion. Now in case of cumene, we studied that the carbon, which is more electron rich, at that, that carbon, the oxidation occurs. And the hydrogen, which is attached to that carbon, between that hydrogen and carbon, that oxygen is inserted. That's what we see, that, that, that's what we have seen. Now in this case, this is the carbon which is most electron rich and this carbon both are symmetrical so we can choose start with any carbon because this carbon these two carbon are directly attached to alkene and the electron cloud of that alkene is slightly diffusing into the orbital of these carbons now this these two carbons are away so they are not having the benefit that other two carbons are having in terms of electron density. 